Happy Finishing Friday, everybody. Um, we are going to be going over in a continuation of what we started last week, which we were talking about our Toscana milk paints. We're gonna be talking about cracking and color layering. So I do wanna make an announcement. We drew um, our winner from last week. We use a random uh, computerized process to be able to um, choose this person. And this person's name is Janet Holmes. So congratulations, Janet. You have won a free uh, bag of cracked gesso. We're gonna be going over again a little bit today how to be able to use the cracked gesso. So congratulations. Make sure to do hashtag Amy Howard Home and share with us how you use the cracked gesso on your project because it, remember, it's your time to enjoy the bragging rights. So let's go over this really quickly again. So they're, working with milk paints is a lot different than working with the one-step paint or with other paints. Um, it is a casein-based, remember it's milk, so it will go bad. That's part of the reason why we use it in a powdered form. So you are going to be starting with either a raw or um, a stained surface or a maybe a surface that you used the one-step paint on. It's got to be ready to be able to accept the milk paint. So I tell people a lot of times, if you wanna be able to paint the one-step paint on first, that way it acts as a binder uh, to, your, to your surface, your furniture, as well as it allows you to be able to start immediately using the milk paint. You cannot use milk paint by itself directly on top of lacquered surfaces and melamine and glass and that type thing like the one-step. They're totally different products. They allow you to be able to do beautiful aging, cracking, and color laying, layering, and that's what we're gonna talk about real quickly today. So, the first thing you wanna do, and congratulations, Janet, for getting the cracked gesso, you're gonna mix it with water. So let's show you how to do that really quickly. So you're gonna to wanna to take um, the powder out of the bag, and we're gonna put it into a container, so you can see. The cracked gesso is a special formulization that I have patented. It doesn't exist by anyone else, and it allows you to be able to get cracking um, and aging onto your surface. Now, can we get a close-up of this? So I want you to be able to see, can you get fairly close? Where Can you see some of the cracking and the distressing on these finishes? Here's another one as far as layering. See how there's two different colors? That's what we talk about with layering. You can see the really subtle cracking in it um, as well as having two different colors and that's what we're going to talk about. So using this cracked gesso, working with water, now you'll see I've got it in here, it's one part gesso, one part water. If you want to back off on the water just a little bit, um, you can. You want it to be about the consistency of thin sour cream, if that kind of helps. Cooking, mixing like this, this is so much like cooking but I, I love it because these products have no VOCs. You don't have to worry about working with toxins. They're natural um, and being asthmatic, that's very, very important to me. So this is some of the cracked gesso that we mixed up earlier. So that way I've got it. I want you to see about the consistency of it. It's a little bit watery. So I probably need to stir this up just a little bit. Everyone is saying hi and they love all hey, the layers. Hey, send me some love. Send me some love. The algorithms and things for us to be able to, um, for more people to know about us and what we're doing, you gotta send me some love. So I love those hearts. It makes me happy when I look at it later that y'all are watching. <laughs> now remember too, we're in Memphis right now. We are um, on Central Standard Time. And so we want you to be sure and ask questions. If you're live and you wanna know how to do this, ask me. Um, and my camera people will make sure that your question gets asked. All right, so I'm just gonna stir this up with a little bit with my brush. I'm always gonna work with a chip brush um, with my cracked gesso. So I'm gonna put it on top of my surface. Now this could very well be a, um, um, a surface that I am putting one step on top of. I can layer milk paint on top of one step. The cracked gesso is going to be multi layers so i'm putting on this first coat here it's going to dry in about 10 to 15 minutes and then i can come back and put on another coat so i'm going to set this aside this is one that i put two coats on earlier so you see it is 100 percent coverage it's very opaque 
you can't see through it, so I wanna make sure it's nice and thick like this. Now, I will tell you that a lot of times with the cracked gesso, it's very dense and it can have a tendency to be kind of rough. If you wanna come back with some 400 sandpaper, you can um, on the cracked gesso. We have now, a question. Yes. So, what is the goal with using gesso? The goal of using the gesso is to crack it. So it will allow you to get a very authentic finish. Let's just come back real close on that again. See how this is kind of popping off? See how it's really cracked? I wish it was where you could see this here. It is one of the most authentic looking cracked finishes. It's not alligator-y um, from like the 90s. It's nothing like that at all. It's a beautiful cracked finish uh, that you see that's very natural on here. All right, so now we're gonna talk about color layering. We want to look at this and the fact that layering of colors, what color you put on first, it's what you're going to see underneath. When we come on top of it with another color, we're wearing down through. So believe it or not, before I antiqued this, this is what this looked like. Because my first layer had been this more rose color underneath, I allowed that to dry. I'll put cracked gesso on top of it again, and then I'm gonna put a coat of the black Toscana milk paint on top of that. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So now I'm gonna layer a color. I've got some cracked gesso here underneath, and I'm gonna mix a color up. There again, remember we take just a little bit of milk paint. We add one part water, one part milk paint, mix it up. Would gesso work on a kitchen island that we are painting this weekend? KC asks. All right, so KC, if you are working on an island, and that's a really good question, you can use it on there if you want to crack it and you want it to look old like this, it'd be perfect. But I would prefer that you probably paint the island with the one-step paint first, then put the grad gesso on it, then come back, if you want a secondary color, put on your first color, then put on the cracked gesso, crack gesso again, and then layer your last coat on it. So let's think about this, because I don't want you to get confused. It's like a double Oreo cookie. You've got two creamy centers. Your cracked gesso is your creamy center. Am I making sense? All right, I'm making a mess here because I'm trying to rush. So I'm gonna put my color on top of my cracked gesso. I do want to make sure that it's opaque, fairly thick, with 100% coverage. Is this product in your in Ace stores? Some Ace stores carry the milk paint, some do not. Um, so if they, if you're a retailer, we also have boutique retailers that carry the milk paints. If they don't, feel free to go to um, amyhowardhome.com and we have the milk paint on there. All right, so I'm gonna allow this to dry about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna put another coat of um, my gesso on after it's dry, and then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna mix up my black, my Noir Milk Paint, just like the peach, and paint on top of it. So that way it's gonna look just like this. Is everybody with me? All right, so now I'm gonna come back. It's just layering, guys. This is when we talk about layering. It just allows you to get multicolors. So for instance, this was just cracked gesso and our Strasburg white, and we antiqued it off, and it left just one, so it's just one color. So you can do it with one color, but just know whatever you're antiquing it with, it's going to, that bottom layer is gonna show through. That's where you are able to do cracking and multi-layering. There are a lot of people that love to paint furniture with Toscana Milk Paint, and they'll do like um, two or three colors of gray. They'll have a light gray, and then a medium gray, and a dark gray. So you can play with it. I really recommend using pieces of trim like this that you can work with to be able to see what your colors are gonna look like. But can you I explain the one-step paint? Does that mean you don't need a top coat? That's right. That's from Kelly. Kelly, you don't have to use a top coat with the one-step paint. The one-step paint is totally different. The one-step paint is gonna come in a can like this or a container. This is a chalk-based paint that you do not have to sand, strip, or seal, and you can go directly on top of anything 
just make sure that you clean it first with our clean slate. The milk paint, on the other hand, this is more of a Toscana, old world Italian finish. So, all right, so now remember, I've got my double Oreo cookie here, and I'm just gonna come back and antique this. So now, no sandpaper. This is what makes this so fun. I've got some of my antiquing glaze. I've put it in a container, and I'm using a natural seawall sponge. Watch this. I wish you were here with me so you could see this because this is what is so exciting and so easy. A lot of times you see people that have done furniture and um, it's, it, it's like they've gone after it. It looks like a wild animal's chewed on it and it doesn't look natural at all. It's because they've just been real abrasive with sandpaper. This antiquing glaze and this process that I'm teaching you of layering colors is gonna allow you to get an incredibly authentic looking finish, so easy, and there's no odor, there's no sanding, and people are gonna be so amazed. That's why I love being able to say, enjoy the bragging rights, because people are gonna go, wait a minute, how did you do that? And it's your secret. You're, you're tuning in on Finish Fridays, and I'm showing you how to do this. Look at this, guys. I was able to wear this down and make this look incredibly authentic with just a little bit of my antiquing glaze and a natural seawall sponge. Did you see how I moved it around? I'm moving it around. I'm not concentrating too much on one particular area and I'm patting it off with just a, um, a lint-free rag. I don't want it to all look even. I don't want it to all look the same. And then when I come back with my waxing technique, it looks like this. See the transformation? It's pretty awesome. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more information about layering, about uh, doing multiple colors, how you can make things look very authentic um, and cracked with our crack gesso, and then having your color underneath, layering it on top, and then antiquing the whole thing. Um, so we're gonna be going more into waxing and plaster techniques in the next two Fridays. So hopefully you'll tune in at 12 noon Central Standard Time. Have a great week, guys. And don't forget, when you work on your projects, it's all about you enjoying the bragging rights. Have a great weekend.